Hey everybody, Tom here at Omnivore Blade Works PK Forge. Whoa, yep, there's the top, Omnivore Blade Works. We're here in the shop and we're gonna talk today about kitchen knives and where we need to go with our line. We've had a couple people ask for uh, kitchen knives. We put out a, an array of different things that we've been trying and how we're gonna do it and what we're gonna explain why we are doing what we're doing and the different materials in which we're using and uh, we're gonna kind of go through everything. So let's start off with what is a kitchen knife? Is this a kitchen knife? Well I would say yeah any knife that we can use to cut food with or could be used in the kitchen is technically a kitchen knife. However, there's a couple different kinds of, of knives. There is a Japanese style sushi knife, which is kind of like this one. Well, obviously it's not done, it's just profiled. We have a barbecue style knife right here, which is flatter on the edge and has more of a tapered head and point. And then we get into the more of the traditional style knives, like this one. This one right here is more of a um, hybrid English French style kitchen knife which has a rounded head for uh, chopping, roll chopping, and a flatter base right here for push cutting. And then we have this one right here, which is a straight traditional style English knife. So with all these different styles and all these different ways and different materials, we're gonna go through and we're gonna one by one tell you about the different materials, why we're gonna use those different materials, and uh, handle materials, blade materials, edge geometries, and then we're gonna ask you guys to help us out with our next line. Hey Tom. Hey Jared. I was just operating the camera, wasn't that fun? It, that was a little nauseating and kind of crooked. Was, yeah, nauseating, but we'll, we'll get there. Yes. All right, so we're gonna go through all these different designs, huh? Yes, sir. It's kind so, of exciting. So as your apprentice, mm -hmm. um, obviously I'm still learning this, and when you're teaching me, we can, as the audience, we can learn together and try to figure out what do we really need to do and why we need to do it. And, and why we're going to be able to make a product that is as good or better than anybody else out there. I think that's the most important part for us. So first thing then would be materials. So what materials are we going to be using for these culinary blades? Well, so there's a couple different ways that we, you and me specifically, have looked at this. Mm -hmm. And again, it's, it's subjective. So I've made this knife out of AEBL stainless. And the reason why this one is so nice is that it is a higher carbon stainless steel and it's very corrosion resistant. Um, however, it's more temperamental for heat treating. Um, it has a, it's a little bit softer of a metal. But you've been doing some heat treating, everything so far in, in the forges that I loaned you and quenching the oil and then tempering it in, a, in a, oven, yes. a kitchen oven. Yes. And you've gotten good results, like Rockwell between what, 55 and 60? Between 55 and 60. Because we were checking it with files. Yes. So Which I, is what I do with my stuff that I send out for us tempering with the 1095 because I can't really rock well check 1095 at quarter inch thick because of the end quench hardenability is, is less in those thick cross sections. Yeah. So we check on the edge. Yes. So with the AEBL, we've been doing pretty good, or I've been doing pretty good with, um, you know, saturation times, uh, how hot to get, everything like that. But um, 1095, even though it is a, a, a steel that is a high carbon, non-stainless, so that it can patina and... Uh, well, actually, for example, um, this is the chef's knife, the first one that I did, the SF Chef. Um, too bad Steven Seagal isn't S. Steven Franco, but I made this for his character on Under Siege, which was ridiculous. But I made the sample without Cerakoting under the 
the handle scales and I used it a bunch and washed it and it developed quite a bit of rust underneath the scales. So from now on, I'm gonna be doing Cerakote underneath the handle materials, which are not glued on on my, my particular blades, whereas yours are gonna be wood, uh, impregnated wood, and other composites and stuff that will be glued on to your scales, right Tom? Yeah, so I don't know if you guys can see the, uh, this is called a, a hybrid scale, so it's a stabilized wood with um, epoxy resin embedded in it, and it has a different color and fill Blue with dyes, a metallic yeah. fill. Yeah. Um, so I've been using these. You want to just cut it there? No, let's keep going. Okay. What have we got? Like uh, eight, five minutes. We're cool. Right. Keep going till eight or ten minutes. So I've been using these with epoxy resin, and, and I find that on a kitchen knife with AEBL, you're adding stainless with the resin. You're not going to get any. Um, well, you glue your intrusion. handles on. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to get any intrusion with water or anything like that. Right. So, so my the tactical stuff with removable handles is like when you have a knife that you're going to go take it to the woods, chop a tree down and then maybe drop it in the creek by accident and then scuff up the finish and then say, hey, Jared, I dropped my knife in the creek. Could you refinish it for me? And then I'll be able to say, sure, send it back. And I'll take the handles off and re it instead of having a kitchen knife where if you drop it in the creek, even with really good epoxy pregnated wood, there is a chance you might have a hard time getting back that brand new look. Yeah, there is a chance that there could be some some aging, and, and now with a lot of chefs, mm -hmm. the aging, the abuse on the blade is a sign of, it's like a badge of honor. Okay. So. It's a different, different tool category. Yeah, exactly. So we're stepping out of the tactical in, into the just kitchen the confidential. Real, real, real kitchen blades. Yeah. And that's the great thing that I appreciate you being here, Tom, because if it hadn't been for you, I would have just made more tactical kitchen knives. And who knows how many people would really <laughs> need a cocktail tactical chick kitchen chicken knife. Yeah. So, but there is a place for this. Yes. There is. Um, and could this be used in a regular kitchen? I know a lot of people that would love to stab somebody on a kitchen well, line. Yeah, I guess so. No, they're, they're violent That is people. one of the criticisms yeah. that I got from my cousin was that it's just too pointy. This there, is pretty pointy too. There is, it, yeah. So... So the difference in pointiness, and I'll explain this one too. So in a kitchen knife, aim, aim, at, the, aim at this thing. I'm gonna use the focusing feature. Whoop. Yeah. So, so this one is extra pointy. All right. Now, when you're using your a kitchen knife with an extra pointy pointy. Right, you're doing small detail work. So with a bigger, wider blade like this, the detail work is really negated. Meaning you really don't, you're not going to do detail work with such a fat blade. It's just too honking big. Yeah, it's just too fat. Yeah. So it's too pointy. All but right. This one, although it has a point, so that you can run it along a bone edge, um, if you're trying to debone or if you're trying to do some small pointy work. There is the point that is there, but it's a little bit more robust and it's not going to um, flex as much. So you can get into the, a carcass or around a bone, a leg bone or whatever. However, even on this one, I don't know if you can see it, this one's flexy, right? So I, I did this one really thin, so that way I can get that small detail and still have a little bit more of a robust point. All right, now let's talk about handle materials real quick so that folks that are interested in buying a blade from you and me will have an idea of what's available. Um, I'm gonna pull the camera and do a little close-up if I can't do that. So, we've got composites over here. Um, from the bottom right, we've got um, Taro Tough, which is a polyester and um, polyester resin and polyester fabric uh, composite. And then we've got canvas micarta, and then what's supposed to be linen, linen black micarta, but it, 
looks almost the same as canvas. Then we got um, green linen, green canvas. Then we have what I think is tan tarot tough, and then red linen, and then um, natural canvas, and then natural, wait a minute, natural linen, and then natural canvas. Because basically the, the difference is in the, the size of the weave. And then this is, up here is Purple Heart. And then there's Maple Burl, another Maple Burl, Snake Wood. That's pretty. And then some epoxy impregnated. Hybrid scale. Hybrid weirdness. Another hybrid weirdness mm -hmm. with blue and copper inlay. And the hand materials are kind of like the sky's the limit for what you can find online. So if you can, if you want to supply the, the hand material, then we could probably make your, scales out of it. Then this is Osage Orange wood on not impregnated because it's so oily it doesn't really need it. And then way over here, which I don't really like this very much myself, is carbon fiber. Um, so, so what are the benefits of having a composite versus a stabilized wood? Well, Wood is the first natural composite. God made it. True. Um, but, so if you're talking about a stabilized wood versus, let's say, a canvas micarta, um, obviously you're going to get a different look, a different mm -hmm. feel. Um, the, the most important part about micarta versus wood is impact toughness and the, the, the fact that it, my carta just does not chip out. Like if you dropped my carta on a rock, it would dent, but you're not going to chip out a hunk of it. Yeah. Where wood is a little bit more fragile, it's even the hybrid where it's in the epoxy resin has the potential for damage. Right. So, um, a lot of people like the look of wood, the feel of wood, and will never go away from that traditional style wood where we use a stabilized, which is a red, a resin embedded wood, Right, and then we can do which this and this are both stabilized, which means that they do have the resin in all the pores, there's no air pockets, and then you have the hybrid here and here. And we're going to be getting a vacuum chamber so we can stabilize any wood. And I like to harvest wood from the, from the forest, so that's going to be fun. Yeah, so we're, we're going to be um, uh, another pro slash con of wood versus micarta. Wood is heavier. Um, you're gonna have a little bit more of a, a rigid feel with wood than you would a micarta. And when it comes to a kitchen knife, repetitive movement over a long period of time, weight in the palm of your hand can uh, fatigue you over time. Where if you have AEBL stainless, which is a lighter metal, than a 1095 for the same roughly the same size blade you're saving ounces and ounces become pounds and pounds you mean keep you the thickness of the blade the overall weight too carbon steel doesn't weigh any different than stainless steel it's negligible right you're kidding me size per pound weight per pound is different so AEVO is actually lighter by volume than high carbon steel. Than high carbon steel. Yes. That's news to me. But, but, what does it really mean overall? Yeah, what's the big deal between carbon versus stainless other than corrosion resistance? Edge retention. So we have, uh, what, carbides in the stainless steel? Yeah, so you're gonna get a, a longer, more consistent edge with the high carbon steel than you would with the AEBL. But that's pretty much just when you're cutting in abrasive materials. Well, what is an abrasive material? Yeah, good question. Newspaper. Well, cardboard. Newspaper, cardboard, right? What about cured meat? With salt in it? Yeah. Which is like one step away from sand? Exactly. So when you're talking about working in a kitchen, you need to be able to cut something like pepperoni or sausage, right? Which has sulfides in it, which are going to overall dull your blade. Not to mention acids. Yeah, good point. So acids are going to etch a 1095. 
over time. We call it patinaing, but it, what it really is is the acid from the, the food etching the blade. AEBL resists that, but is more susceptible to the salts that are going to be in cured meats, um, you know, if it's any kind of dry aging process or anything like that. So a tougher, more fibrous material, AEBL is going to be more susceptible and it's going to require more sharpening than a 1095 would. I'm confused, but we need to wrap this up. So for uh, the, the summation of this, this discussion, let's uh, ask our viewers to tell us what style of kitchen blades you'd like to see us put into low production or maybe full production. Um, the Daniele knife is in the middle. That one is not going to be in production. Okay. Then we're going to have to do a, a slight difference on that one then. Well, this one right here is a slight variance of the Daniele knife. So it's a clip point versus a pointy point. Yes. Okay. A clip point versus a pointy point and more of a finger choil in the, in the base. Okay. So Other we have, that, it's the same. our options are going to be full tangs designs versus hidden tang designs with possibly bolsters or other things like a piece of silver or jade could be made into bolsters and uh, or a combination thereof. And then we have the ability to make like sushi style cleavers or slicers and then English or French or Japanese style blades. And then of course the, the tactical st style stuff. And um, of course, I'm really excited about the, hang the hungry uh, javelina, which is what Tom apparently is this, the big thing is the best thing I've ever made. This is, this is literally the best knife that Omnivore Blade Work, Omnivore Blade Works ever has made, and I'll explain exactly why. Okay, Tom. We're going to have a, the longest video ever. No, well... And there's nothing to cut out. So keep, go ahead. Yeah. So, so the reason being is there's a knife that you can use anytime in any point in your life, right? It has the flat edge so that you can cut things like lemons, limes, uh, any kind of prep for a bar. It has a bottle opener on it. And then if anything, any of your tap lines, you have a virtual wrench right here to help with tap lines. So if any of your tap lines bust, need cleaning, whatever, take out any kind of filter screens, anything like that, you can use this. This is a true bar knife that you can use at any bar at any time. It can also be brought into the kitchen and used to cut anything in a pinch that you need. Cool. Well, I, I agree. And, and it's versatile <laughs> because you can go out to a campsite and this weighs nothing. And yet you can do everything that you need to do with it in a commercial kitchen, in your home kitchen, or in a tent situation. This right here is the most versatile knife that you'll ever, ever, ever need. Period. Well, thank you, Tom. And I'm going to I'm gonna have a handful of these strapped to me at the Blade Show in a few weeks because I've got the sheath that I'm working on now, which will be like a vertical or horizontal draw. And if, well, if you go to Blade Show and you find Jared, what we'll do is we'll have a special offer in the description below. We'll, we'll, we'll do something good. I, I'm not 100% sure what it is, but we'll do something. Tom will do something. I, <laughs> uh, okay, here's what I'm going to do. You ready for this one? The first person to find Jared. The first person to find Jared. Who gets a free javelina. Or what? What else? I can wow. hey, a hug. How about a hug? Well, no, no hug. What are you thinking? What am I thinking? I'm thinking I have a six inch barbecue chopper that I will make custom for you. That's even better than a javelina. I will, I will make it to your specifications. Find Jared, tell him that Tom rocks, buy one of the javelinas. That's the requirement. You need to buy a javelina. And the first person to do so that says Tom is the man, and to buy a javelina, you get a six inch barbecue chopper. I think that, that sounds good. Yeah, buy the javelina so I can pay for some gas. Yeah, because, yeah. 
Because <laughs> living at home is such a drag. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, Tom. All right. And uh, I can't really, this is Omnivore Blade Works. I can't really see myself because the camera's turned around backwards. But uh, this is a ridiculous long video, and I hope you enjoyed it. So we'll see you next time. Adios.